We come to you. Hey John, I'm just checking. Can you hear me now? So answer in there if you can, because we just weren't sure if the Zoom was working. Hello, thanks for joining. Great, glad you can hear me. I'm not on mute, so hopefully you can hear me. I can see some familiar names in there. Thank you all for coming. Get started at a couple of minutes past seven, just to let people, we actually had 160 people register apparently. So we'll just wait and give people the right amount of time to get in. If anyone would like to tell me where you're from, that would be great. I would love to know where you're all from. Someone's from Albany, someone's from Mount Barker, someone's from Queensland, Sydney, Kalamunda. 
Uh, USA, Perth, Ireland, Esperance. I haven't had anyone from Ireland before, so welcome. Geraldton, great. I lived in Geraldton for 20 years. You might already know that. Vic Park, New Plymouth in New Zealand, Perth. Anyway, I haven't heard of Narama. Dunsborough, I know that person. Hello, Ellen. Missouri. Wow, this is great. Perth. Island. I've always wanted to go to Kangaroo Island. Sorry, I'm looking that way. I will look at you guys in a minute. That's where my chat screen is. Perth. Hill Boat Harbour on your yacht. Hello, I know you too. How are you going? I've got Bandit the Superdog on here. If anyone wants to see a YouTube video from Bandit the Superdog, there's one on Restorative Sexual Health YouTube channel. Boy at Brook. I know that person too. Hello, Phil. Got smack on seven. I'll just wait for two minutes and then we'll get started. Sixty-six people in so far, which is pretty good because normally you get about half of the mm. amount of people. So that's great. So what mm. I'm going to talk about with you today, in summary, is we're just going to go through what you do for a penile rehabilitation and how to get your function back after prostate cancer treatment. But what I really want you to know, which is most important, is that the treatments are exactly the same for any erectile dysfunction. So I know when I've done these webinars before, people have gone, well, what do I do if I've just got normal erectile dysfunction that might have happened from age or medication or other reasons? So this, everything, I'm, I'm going to talk a lot about prostate cancer rehabilitation, but really everything that we do is for anybody who has erectile dysfunction that's been long ongoing. Um, so it will apply to everybody. So it's one minute past seven. So, oh, there's someone here from Cape Town. Congre Hello, nice to meet you. Um, all right, so I think we'll get started. So here goes. Now, if you're already one of my regular patients, which I can recognise a few of the names, so thank you very much for coming. And I will forgive you if you get out halfway through because... Um, You've probably heard a lot of what I'm going to say before, but hopefully there'll be something new in this and it'll be good and you'll get something out of it. So probably something that my regular patients wouldn't have heard before is why I do this for a job. So wait a minute, I'm just having trouble here with the tech because there you go. So I thought I always start these things off with, what I do, why I do what I do. And um, the, basically the background reason is when I was, I was a very, um, I was a new grad when I was 22 years old and I went to a country town, Geraldton, and I worked in emergency department. And um, when I worked there, I worked with a nurse, a senior nurse, who was always coming to work on night shift and telling me about her amazing sex life. And she was in her 40s at the time. So uh, when she was that age and I was early 20s, I was quite disgusted in the fact that anybody that age was still having sex. So I, I'm sure that's a, not a surprise to all of you. You've probably been there and now you're at that age or older and you realise that we still do have sex when you get older. Anyway, many years later, I was in private practice, in general practice, and the same lady came in to see me and she was in her 60s then. And I went to give her a vaginal examination and it was very dry and uncomfortable. So... I said to her, you know, what's going on? I remember you being quite sexually active. How do you do it now? It must be really painful and there's things we can do to help. And she burst into tears and said her husband had had his prostate out two years before and they'd had no intimacy whatsoever ever since. And she just felt really sad and lonely and really quite miserable about the fact that they didn't have that connection anymore. And I asked her if she'd spoken to him about it and she said she'd tried, but he just wouldn't engage with her. And so I said, you know, I didn't know anything about penile rehabilitation at that stage. So I said, why don't you get him to come in and I'll chat to him? So I did. And he was really depressed. And he said that he had stopped showing any affection or emotion 
like any kind of physical affection to his wife. He didn't even hold her hand because he felt like it was false advertising. I thought this was really sad. So I said, go away. You know, I got um, the lady in as well and we talked about the fact that there's so much more to intimacy than sex and intercourse. So I said, go home and hold hands and cuddle and do all of those things again. And she explained to him that it wasn't about the intercourse. She just wanted the closeness. Uh, and in the meantime, I would try and figure out how I could help because I was sure there was a way that I would be able to help. And so I found out that there certainly was and I got them to come back and we started penile rehabilitation and treatment. And a few months down the track, they were able to have intercourse again. And they sent me this beautiful letter saying, thank you so much. Like we feel like we're falling in love again and we're close again. And that just made me realise that there's so many things that we can do to help people, but because sex isn't something that's talked about a lot, um, it's knowledge that's there and it's done, a lot of research is done into this sort of thing, but it isn't translated so that normal people can use it and know what to do. So I went off, went home and I said to my husband, I think I want to go and study sexology. And he was like, great, I'll get the best bar cred ever when I tell my mates that I'm married to a sexologist. It's way cooler than a nurse practitioner. So that's how I ended up here. Um, and, yeah, so anyway, it's, it's a strangey but a goodie. So sorry, I'm just not very good with this tech stuff. You think I would be after all the amount of times I've done it. So what do we have here? So this is just a little cartoon that I had drawn because, you know, I think this is a really true story. You know, couples just don't communicate about sex and it doesn't matter how long you've known each other for. It's just a really difficult conversation. And I talk to other people about sex all day long, but when it comes to my own sex life, it's difficult. Like it's hard. It's a hard conversation to have with people you love. So my aim is to make it not so hard and so that we can all talk about it. So intimacy is really important. It's really important for men and women. Now, my screen has gone black, so I hope that means you can still see me. If you can't, I'll get Corazon to send me a message to say you can't see me, but hopefully you can. Um, so intimacy is really important. It's important for men and it's important for women as well. And a lot of people think it's not, but it is really important for both sexes and all the people that are fluid and in between. It's important for our relationships. I mean, we all have good friends and mates, but it's not the same as the intimate relationship we have with, with our partner. It's really important for our mental health. When we have um, sexual pleasure, we release a whole lot of lovely hormones like oxytocin, dopamine, and they make us feel good. Um, and it's, it's good for our heart, it's good for our physical fitness. It's, there's just nothing wrong with having a healthy sex life. You that sex after prostate cancer treatment or even after any kind of erectile dysfunction is exactly going to be the same. It's not going to be, but it can be good and it should be as good. And some people even tell me that it's better because, you know, when you've been in a long term relationship, often you'll just do the same thing all the time. And then when you're faced with a change in function, you need to mix it up. So you wouldn't eat the same flavoured ice cream every day for the rest of your life. You wouldn't go and buy vanilla or chocolate if it was your favourite every day. Every now and then, hopefully, mm. you'd step outside and do something different. And having a sexual dysfunction problem, whether it's prostate cancer, erectile dysfunction, a dry vagina, whatever the story is for you, being able to do that is often an opportunity to explore other things find solutions to your problem. And sometimes it can actually be really interesting and exciting. It just depends how you look at it. So sexual dysfunction is really common. Okay, now if you have any questions at all, please just put them in the chat and I'm going to go through them all at the end. So sexual dysfunction is a really common thing and it's common in everyone. And I often say to men when I see them, any man over the age of 50, all he has to do is look at his friends and one in three of those guys, regardless of what their medical history is, will have problems with their erections. It's so common. 30 to 50% of the general population have sexual dysfunction. And if you suffer from depression, then 90% of people with depression have sexual dysfunction. Sometimes it's caused from the depression itself, 
and sometimes it's caused from the treatment of the depression. And there is a like correlation between the two. You get depressed and then you can develop sexual dysfunction or you can develop sexual dysfunction and be depressed about it. So they have a really strong interact, like co-relationship with each other. There's a very large discrepancy in the statistics following prostate cancer treatment. If you look at the research, 29 to 60%. But remember, research is always about 10 years behind being like released to the subject, to the people. So whatever you read in the latest research, like in the newspaper, is not often the latest research because there's a, a time lapse between when they get the data and then they actually get it published for people to read. So I prefer to go on what I see anecdotally and I see about 70% of people who have prostate cancer surgery now and less with radiation but still high percentage return to their um, pre-treatment function or at the very least they get back a decent quality of a sex life with their partner in an intimate life. So it doesn't have to be doom and gloom and grim. There is certainly things you can do about it. So there's lots of different causes for sexual dysfunction. It is definitely multifactorial. So the actual disease, any disease can cause this problem, age and the treatment of disease. And so it's not just people who have prostate cancer surgery, men who have bowel cancer surgery, they have pelvic problems, anything to do, bladder problems, anything to do with that can cause sexual dysfunction and the treatments for them can as well. One of the most common things I see with men is they come in and they have suddenly developed um, erectile dysfunction and they have no idea why. And it's often because they've got an enlarged prostate and they've been prescribed a medication like Juadart or Vesicare. And those drugs are great at making you be able to not have to go to the toilet so often and get up at night, but they give you a limp penis, unfortunately. And there are solutions. Often it's as simple as changing people from that medication to one that will help with the prostate and the urine problem, but also give them better erections rather than worse. So my, my big message is just don't put up with sexual dysfunction. There's so much help available. It's just hard to know where to go. So what I'm mainly here to talk about tonight is a three-step system that will help you overcome the effects of prostate cancer treatment, but also, as I said earlier, any erectile dysfunction issue. Um, and then and to get your function and your performance back. And so I'm not going to tell you that every person who follows this program is going to get back to have been a penis that works like it did in there in their 20s. But what I can tell you is that at the end of it, you'll have a healthy penis. Hopefully you'll return to spontaneous erection. And if you don't, you will have other workarounds to enable you to have a healthy sex life and to keep your penis from shrinking. So this is just a little trip down memory lane. Remember when you used to wake up every morning with an erection? Well, this is really important. So the, I always joke with my patients about this, that God is clearly a man because the penis and the clitoris are the only parts of the human body that actually exercise themselves. So whilst we're asleep, the penis and the clitoris go up and down um, because the nerves down there tell them they should, and that's the way we exercise the smooth muscle. So muscle in the penis is like any other muscle in the body. If you don't use it, it shrinks. So if you think about a gym junkie who goes to the gym and he's working out all the time and he gets big biceps and then he stops, his muscles will shrink. And that's why penises shrink as we get older because you're not getting these morning erections, which means you're not getting the nocturnal exercise that you had before. So, you know, remember what it used to be like when you didn't have to think about how your penis worked. And actually today I had a guy tell me that he remembers catching the bus to school and he couldn't sit on the back seat because when he did, the motion always gave him an erection and it was really embarrassing. And now he wishes he could sit on the back seat of a bus and get an erection. And whenever he gets on a bus, he sits on it just in to go down memory lane, which I thought was quite humorous. Um, and I also think we underestimate, particularly women, and I used to as well, underestimate how having a functioning penis affects your masculinity and your manhood. 
And I think it's really difficult for women to understand that. And I know there's some women um, have registered for this today. So if you're listening, I hope this helps. But, and if you have got a female partner, tell them this. But I think we as women miss the connection between a functioning penis and a man's self-esteem and their ability to feel like a man. And it's not about using it. It's just about knowing it's there and that it's functioning. And I think it's very similar to women when they get a mastectomy and they lose their breasts from breast cancer, they often feel like they've lost their femininity. And I think it's really important for us all to acknowledge that that's how a man feels. And it's, it's important that these bits of your body work, they're a part of you. And I, they're, they're something that you really need to respect and understand. So my promise to you is that if you'd like your penis to return to its pre-prostate or its, um, its erect state, that you can keep it healthy and stop the shrinkage and keep it going well if you do some work. Your intimate relationships are important to you, then you do need to address this. And I think often women, female partners, will say to their men, or even in same-sex couples, the partner who doesn't have the problem will say to the other one, it's okay, I don't mind if we never have intercourse again. And the, the man who has the sexual dysfunction takes that as, oh, she doesn't care. But actually, it's not that. They do really care and they would like to be intimate with you, but they think by saying that they are taking you off the hook so you don't have to feel bad about it. And, and I think maybe a better way for us women to handle this is to say to our partner, if we can never have intercourse again, it's okay, but I really would like to still be able to be intimate with you and work towards that. And if we can't get there, that's all right. We can find other ways to be intimate because intimacy is important and, and, it, and it's not okay just to say to someone, it's all right, doesn't matter if we never do it again. It's, it's important to say, I'd like to, but if you can't, it's not a deal breaker. So anyway, I hope that's my little bandwagon for the day. Um, so what I want to do today is show you how to overcome erectile dysfunction, stop the shrinkage, and you only do need to spend 10 minutes a day. And you don't need to do dodgy things like the amount of times I have men send me emails with some snake oil, like um, herbal treatment that's offered online, that's a mix of a whole lot of strange things, and they're hopeful that that might suddenly miraculously turn their, return their erections. I mean, there are actually three herbs that are very good in improving blood supply and blood flow to the shaft of the penis, but they're actually quite cheap. <laughs> you don't need to buy them in some fancy mix that costs an absolute fortune and, uh, you know, and, and it doesn't need to be, it's not a miracle cure. It's not going to cure it. It's a good adjunct. So let's talk about penile rehabilitation. Our rehabilitation is for you if you want to do these three things that we've just discussed before and I went into a bit of detail about. So what's the goal? The goal of doing penile rehabilitation is to stop shrinkage because no one wants to have a smaller penis. Um, Re-establish intimacy with your partner. Turn your software into firmware and hopefully eventually hardware. Uh, that was an expression actually that one of my patients gave me a couple of years back and I love that expression, software, firmware, hardware. Uh, I think you had quite a lot to do with IT, obviously. Uh, feel your masculine self again and that's it. That's the whole goal of this is what we want you to do. So first up, I just want to show you these and these slides will be available. We'll put this um, webinar up on our YouTube channel once we finish. So you'll be able to look these um, references up. But I just want to show you really that there's a lot of research done into this. And the research shows that if you don't use it, you lose it. So we need to, you know, keep our penis healthy. We need to exercise it. If you had a hip replacement, you would go to the physio, get exercises and keep that hip and those muscles around that hip and in the leg working why you, you know, to recover. And, and there's no different with the penis. Just because it's in your genitals doesn't mean that we should ignore that. So the first step is 
An active penis equals a healthy penis. So we do need to exercise the penis. Now, this little cartoon character here, his name is Jeffrey. Uh, any of the of my patients who are watching, this is Jeffrey. They've met him before in clinic. Um, so this is the cartoon version of Jeffrey. I use Jeffrey as a teaching tool. My son thinks this is terrible because he's so large that I need to get a smaller one, but it's actually impossible to buy a smaller dildo. So um, you just have to look at him. So the reason we want to keep the penis active is because it's a muscle. And as I said to you before, all muscles need to be exercised. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we will do that in a minute. Your penis needs some rocket fuel. So rocket fuel is, the rocket fuel for the penis is nitrous oxide gas. And the way a penis works at the moment, when it's all healthy and it's working well, is the nerves around your prostate when you get aroused send a message to your brain to send nitrous oxide gas to the smooth muscle of the penis and then it dilates and then the blood comes in the problem is when you have erectile dysfunction for whatever the cause those nerves aren't sending that message anymore so you're not getting any nitrous oxide gas into your penis and that that means you can't get vasodilation and then you can't get which is just a fancy word for cells opening up and if you can't get vasodilation then you're not going to get um, an erection because you can't get blood into the penis. So these are what the smooth muscles look like inside Jeffrey. Um, and if you have a look, there's two like cylinders down each side. They're called the corpus cavernosum and they're the bits that fill up with blood and they're all lined with smooth muscle. And so if that's not healthy, you cannot get an erection. So that's the whole aim here. We're trying to keep that as healthy as possible. So, sorry, I'm just changing slides. Right. So these are the tools of the trade. So I've got one here. This one is actually my favourite. The, the hydro pump works really well as well. It's just that in the days of climate change, it's a little bit um, difficult because you do use a lot of water, except I have got one patient who uses his bath mate pump, hydro pump, in his swimming pool on the step, which always makes me chuckle whenever I think about it because I can just imagine the neighbours looking over the fence and there's a man with a rocket attached to his penis on his steps in his pool. Anyway, as you can tell, I have a strange sense of humour. But the other pump is this one. It's the Vacurect. And if anyone's watched a touchy subject videos, um, she talks, Victoria Cullen talks about this a lot. And I think it's a brilliant pump. And to be honest, I've never really been a big fan of um, penis pumps and rings, but this is the only one I've ever seen that works. Uh, it was invented by a South African gentleman who had prostate cancer and it works brilliantly for rehabilitation. Um, and it comes also with a rehab ring. Now, if any of you are watching, you already have bought a Vacurect, they don't, you, you need to order the Vacurect separately, uh, the, sorry, the ring separately. So if you need a ring, then contact me or contact um, the supplier who you bought your pump through and get one of these. They're only like 20 bucks extra. When you buy one from us, we put it in the pack. But if you bought one from another supplier, this wouldn't go in. But this is the most important part that you need. So that's just a little side note if you've bought one already. Ooh. So vitamins for your penis, what are they? So as I said, there's a lot of weird and wonderful things out there that um, tell you that they're going to make your penis bigger and harder and all these things that are herbal tablets. But vitamins for your penis are really PDE5 medication, and that includes Cialis, also called Tadadafil, Viagra, also called Sedanafil, and Spedra, also called Avanafil. Now, the idea of these drugs is that they make the natural supply of nitrous oxide gas last longer and the muscles relax in the penis and then you can get more vasodilation and a better erection. When you're using them from a rehabilitation perspective, the idea is, is that you're pumping more blood into the pelvis because more blood means more oxygen. More oxygen, you get better healing. So that's what we want. We want blood, oxygen and healing. And anyone who's ever had a um, knows of anyone who's had a really terrible ulcer, leg ulcer, there's a, a good treatment where they put you in a bariatric chamber because you get more oxygen in your blood and then you get better healing. And there is actually some research going on at the moment about men with erectile dysfunction spending time in bariatric chambers to improve that. 
So at the moment, what we do have is um, PDE5 medication. And there's a, most people think of these medications as you take one, wait a little while, and then you get an erection. But the way you use them in a rehab program is quite different. Um, so you use them at different doses and you take them at different time of the day. Uh, but they are very important and they're a very good and safe drug to take. Uh, people, even with high blood pressure, can take PDE5 medications, which is often a strange thing because patients don't realise that. They think if you've got high blood pressure, you can't take these tablets. They were all actually originally invented to lower blood pressure. And the advantage um, was that they found the side effect was that men got erections when they took them and they marketed them that way because they made a lot more money out of it. Uh, but they're very, very safe drugs, these. And I can't stress enough how important it is in a penile rehabilitation program. So the second discovery is that you can prevent this shrinkage. So it's kind of a bit of an urban myth that anyone who develop, gets prostate cancer ends up with a shrunken penis. Um, you do lose, if you have surgery, about a centimetre, but that's all from the surgery. The rest of it is all from lack of exercise because you're not getting those nocturnal erections that we were talking about earlier. This is just another example of an academic paper that will show you about that. The, it, it actually talks about penile length and it actually talks about how there's actually not that much change in size. Um, and if you were to use a penal, penis pump and keep exercising the penis, then this is not going to be a long term issue. There's also a heap more research papers and obviously I'm not going to stop long enough for you to read all of these but you will get these slides after and you'll feel free to look these up they're all freely available on the internet on Medscape. So the third discovery is that it's perfectly healthy to be sexually active as we age and you're never too old to enjoy sexual intimacy and I always use, I've got a patient in his 90s and his wife's in his late 80s, her late 80s, and they're very sexually active. And I have lots of patients in their 70s and 80s. And I think it's it, just because you get older doesn't mean you shouldn't be enjoying, you know, intimacy, sexual intimacy. And as I said earlier, it's really good for your physical health and your mental health. And, and I think that 21-year-old me is kind of horrified when I look back at her and think that I thought this woman in her 40s was too old to still be having sex. So, yeah. Um, there's some links being added in the chat as we talk by Corazon, who's my assistant, and um, so feel free to have a look at those. And we'll also send out the link to this video at the end. So just back on um, sexual health and sexual wellbeing, who lists that as a human right now, along with food, water and shelter? That's a relatively new thing. It's only been around um, for a few years now. But if I think if it's good enough for the World Health Organisation to say that, you know, that sexual health and wellbeing is one of these things in line with food, water and shelter, then I think it's good enough for us not to go, oh, we're old now. We don't need to worry about that anymore and, and realise how important it is to keep these things happening. Just on that, the other thing I often hear people say is, I feel bad because I'm sad that I can't function sexually, but I had cancer and it's gone now. I should just be grateful. Well, I don't actually agree with that because getting rid of cancer is great, and of, but it doesn't mean that you can't want it all. Like, you know, a lot of men nowadays will get diagnosed with prostate cancer and be cured from it. You know, there's a 96 to 98% cure right now. And then you've got like another 20 or 30 years of life. What do you have to just go, I, I escaped cancer, so I just have to put up with it? You know, you don't get a melanoma on your leg and go, oh, it doesn't matter if I can never walk again, they fix the melanoma. So there is no difference. So I think it's okay to want to be able to be functioning and cancer-free and, and you shouldn't feel guilty about that. So I know I've given you a lot of information and it sounds really overwhelming, um, but once you actually know what to do, it should only take you 10 minutes a day to do it. And I think that's really important. We all live busy lives. doesn't matter if we're retired. In fact, I know some retired people who are way busier than working people. So even if you're retired, you know, and 10 minutes a day is all you need to be able to do it, even if you're busy. 
And there is three steps to the program, which we'll talk about again in a little bit more detail. So there is some things that you can do to maximise your own chances of erection recovery, which are you can look after your diet and your exercise. Exercise is the most important thing because when you exercise, you get nitrous oxide gas all through your body and nitrous oxide gas is the friends to every muscle in your body. Uh, smoking, obviously it's really bad. Main reason is it blocks the small arteries. The, and if we block small arteries, we're stopping blood flow and penises and erections rely 100% on blood flow. And alcohol, you can control how much alcohol you drink. I'm sure that most men have experienced brewer's droop at some stage in their life. So having a couple of drinks is fine. Um, but drinking to excess obviously isn't. It also doesn't help if you've got problems with your bladder control. Alcohol is just makes it leak. Practicing pleasure, it's really important. And practicing using erection aids, you can use that. Mindset and belief adjustment. So believing that you are entitled to have intimacy, it doesn't matter how old you are or what health issues you have, you're still entitled to it. And there's always a workaround to be able to enjoy sexual pleasure. Managing stress and improving your relationship. So it doesn't matter if you have the best working penis in the whole world, if your relationship isn't any good, it's not going to do you any good. And if you're stressed, you have adrenaline and cortisol running through your body. And adrenaline and cortisol are like kryptonite to erections. So we need to manage our stress so that we don't have those things which put us off sexually and stop us from performing. Speaking openly with your partner. So back to that conversation I said before, you know, if your female partner says to you, it's okay if we never have sex again, I don't mind, I'm just glad you're alive, don't be offended by that. Delve into that a bit more. Actually ask, does that mean you never want to have sex again? Or does that mean that if we could, you'd like to, but it's not the be all and end all and you're just trying to be kind? So talk openly with your partner and find out what they really mean when they speak. I mean, that whole thing of men are from Mars and women are from Venus, I think is so true that, you know, we'll often, a woman will say something and a man will hear something different and vice versa. So I think it's important that we flesh out these conversations so we are all on the same page. You need to seek help and, you know, you need to grieve for what you've lost because it's sad to lose something that you've always taken for granted and there's nothing wrong with feeling sad about it. Don't feel guilty about that. You're not in control of what nerve damage was done with your treatment and you're not in control of how fast your nerves repair or don't. And the other thing that really affects your recovery is what your erections were like before. You're never going to have better erections after you've had prostate cancer treatment than you did before. But it is quite realistic to get you back to where you were before if um, depending on the scenario and what sort of surgery or radiation or what treatment you had and what sort of rehab program you do. And age, remembering that erectile function always decreases with age. So if you have treatment and you start recovering, you might you may have had a natural decline anyway over that two years. So there's kind of like a, a midpoint in the middle that we want to meet. So to help you do this properly, you do need guidance. It's not, you know, there's so much research out there and it actually is really difficult to put it all together and figure out, okay, what do I do first and when do I do it? And that's really why I came up with this program because when I started seeing patients face-to-face -face for this about six and a half, you know, seven years ago now, um, I was so confused about all the mixed messages I was getting and there's so much research out there and just trying to sift through it all and go, okay, what is a co cohesive management that I can give to men and their partners that they can follow through and they don't have to do all this reading and study that, that I've done to get there and something that's actually achievable because we all live busy lives and, you know, no one has an hour a day to spend on worrying about their penis. So um, being able to put it all down so everyone understands what they're doing, why they're doing it, and get the job done in 10 minutes a day, I think is really important. And so that's why we have this program. So the program involves uh, all these modules, so seven modules. The first module is just teaching you about the anatomy of the penis and how it works and why it works. And 
it sounds strange, but most men that I see who are, you know, 40 plus, they've never even thought about how their penis works before. Most men don't even know they have a pelvic floor until they get diagnosed with prostate cancer. So this module teaches you about it. And so you can't fix a car if you don't know how it works and you can't fix your body if you don't know how it works. So I think that's really important. Then we have prehabilitation. So this is for the people who haven't had any treatment yet, but they have a diagnosis that they know is going to affect their sexual function after. So there are steps you can take to improve your outcomes and things you can do before the treatment. We also have, then we get into module three, which is post-treatment, and it is follows step by step what um, penis pills to take, when to take them, why you're taking them, what penis pump to use, what the regime is. If you go on YouTube now and look up how to use a penis pump for rehabilitation for a penis, you will see things ranging from five minutes to 15 minutes to 20 minutes. I mean, totally unrealistic. No one is going to walk around with a penis pump hanging off for 20 minutes a day. So we just have, I've looked at all the research and figured out the most concise way that you can get good exercise and mimic that 20 to 30 nocturnal erections you should have been getting to keep your penis healthy. Module four is the eager beavers. And this is for people, it generally takes about two years for a rehabilitation program to work and to get your spontaneous function back if you can. And as I say, not everyone does, but a lot of people do nowadays. Um, and the eager beaver section is, well, who wants to wait two years to get a hard erection? And there is a lot of things you can do to be able to have intimacy without a hard erection. So we talk about that. We talk a lot in this program about outer course and all the fun things you can do to have sexual pleasure. A lot of couples that I see have never even had a sex toy or been to a sex toy shop until they meet me. And um, it adds a whole new dimension to their intimate life. There's a lot of great couples toys now. Sex toys aren't some weird kinky thing that they used to be that you only saw in porn movies. A lot of them are actually quite classy, nice looking and fun to play around with. Um, we also teach in this section injectables and everybody, when you mention the word stick a penis, uh, needle in your penis is usually horrified, but honestly, they don't hurt. And any of my patients that are in the chat, um, I'd love it if you'd put in a comment that you've used an injection and um, you don't have any pain with it. So it's awkward to learn how to do it, but you don't stick a needle straight in. You use this, which is an auto injector and the auto injector, you don't even see the needle. It sits on the shaft of your penis. You press a button, push a plunger, take it out. And 10 minutes later, you get an erection. Now it is, you know, a fiddly trying to get the dose because everybody uses a different dose. And so you start low and then you gradually increase it until you get to the right dose. But as I say, there's a lot of workarounds. We also talk in that program about how to use a vacurect pump with a cock ring um, if you really are not into the idea of using injections. Module five talks about the cons of rehab. So, you know, the, everything has its negatives. And really the biggest negative I hear about um, doing a rehab program is that men tell me they often feel like they're just never been so focused on their penis in their life until they're, unless they're a teenager. And that gets a little bit tedious and, and I get that. Um, so we talk about that, talk about this is a normal way to feel and, and ways to work around that. Survivorship, that module is all about what you can do to keep cancer away. So that's more about diet, exercise, health, all those things to keep yourself healthy. And module seven is just a summary. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, Corazon just told me that two people replied about the injections in the chats. Thank you. So the Penile Rehabilitation Program um, is, it's going to give you three things. It's going to give you knowledge so that you have all the information you need to go through your surgery, your radiation, whatever, recover and then improve. It's going to empower you to wake up knowing that you have the answers to your questions and it's going to give you some control over your own destiny. Like, I think it's really sad that often patients just hand over their control to their doctor or their nurse practitioner or their physio 
and they feel powerless. So the idea here is that you know what's going on and you have the power to control what's going on. Guidance, you know, this is like, it's a lot of information to take in. So you can go back to this whenever you want to. Uh, I'm gonna show you through the program in a minute, but there's a little video and written stuff and there's also a workbook to go with it. So at any stage, you can go back and go, oh, what did she say about that? And look at it again, and that's unlimited. And then we have, so what do you actually get? You get all the modules. Um, it's all online. If When you purchase the program, Corazon sends you a link and your own login, and then you log in whenever you want and you guide yourself through it and it paste. You will also get a printed workbook with um, worksheets and tips to keep you on track. And it's got like um, tables in there that you can fill out because the changes are so tiny. You often don't realise that things are getting better unless you record them incrementally. And actually the reason I put those in is because I actually have a lot of men who come with their own made tables. And I've, I've actually pinched these tables from some of the men that I've seen because it's so brilliant when you look at their graph and go, wow, they've improved so much. And I think it's a really good visual to know that what you're doing is working. And you also get a digital copy, which you can download, um, depending on what you prefer. The printed workbook gets posted to everybody. Don't know um, what the post is like in the rest of the world at the moment, but it's a little bit dodgy in Australia at the moment, but um, you get there eventually, That's, but you get the digital program as well, the digital workbook. So what really I want you to know from this and me rambling on at you for nearly an hour is um, that penile rehabilitation exists because a lot of people don't even know it does, um, mm. that it does work. And um, one of the patients apparently said that it's a little bit painful. Naughty, naughty, Ellen. Um, <laughs> and I've shown you how that you can assist you to rehabilitate your penile function and restore your manhood. So the reasons why I think this is a good option is that it will save you a lot of time sifting through information to come up with the rehab program. Um, you may not have access to somebody like me near you. And um, for anyone who is in Perth, or I, I'm booked out until the end of May now, I think, but I do have two lovely nurse practitioners working with me now, Kendall and Sharon, and you'll be able to find out more about them on my website. Um, they see patients face to face as well, and they're very good with penile rehabilitation too. Now they're both urology uh, nurse practitioners, and Kendall also specialises in diabetes and weight management because having a fat belly is like a bad thing for your erectile function. So she helps out with that. She has a nutrition degree as well. Um, it's if you want to turn your software into firmware, then this is a good option. And the other thing is, is lots of people are busy and a lot of people are really private and they want to do this stuff in the privacy of their own home. They don't want to go to a clinic. This program isn't for you if, because, you know, we don't want people buying something that they're not going to use. If you're not committed to your overall health and wellbeing, and if you don't care about your penile function, you know, penile rehabilitation, I think it's important to note isn't just about sex. You know, if you don't do the rehab, the chances of getting a shrunken penis and then not being able to stand up to pee anymore are quite high. And you can also develop something called Peyronie's disease where you get a bend in the penis. So penile function, it's not just about that. It's also about, about keeping your penis healthy. If you're not willing to invest in your health and your future relationships and you just think, I don't want to worry about that, I don't have the time or the money or whatever, then this program isn't really for you. Um, as I said, it's really, if you're motivated, it's not just for people with prostate cancer diagnosis and I am going to um, offer just a straight erectile dysfunction online program soon, but the, the principles are pretty much the same. Um, it's just a different timeline when you would start things really, that's the only difference. Sexual intimacy and penile, um, penile rehab is important to you and your partner. And you do need to have reasonable computer skills. Now, you may have noticed from, oh, I forgot to click forward in these, sorry. There you go. Um, 
You may have noticed that I'm not very technical because I'm flicking around all over the place and I can manage it. I've managed to make it with a lot of help from Corazon. So uh, you just need to be able to get an email and click on a link. If you can do that, then you can do this. And I'm sure most of you are very capable of that. So what happens now if you were interested? And as I say, if you're any of my long-term patients and uh, I see you regularly, then you don't need this because you've done it all before. Um, but you can visit the chat to Melissa and then you can just sign up straight away and you'll get the program sent to your inbox. Um, but if you did want to have a chat first and ask me about how it affects you, as I said, I'm, norm I'm booked out for face-to-face um, -face consults until the end of May, but I have two afternoons a week that I set aside just for the people who are involved in this program. So there's always an av availability there for you to book a consult. Um, and then we have a chat about it and you can tell me your actual story. And then from that, I can say yes or no, if it would suit you. But if you've got erectile dysfunction and you're worried about your penis shrinking, then it will suit you. So the cost of the program is 900 and oh, it's usually um, $1,097 US. But um, now one gentleman has just said in the chat, sorry for laughing, that penis pumps suck. Well, that is the purpose of a penis suck, a penis pump. It is actually supposed to suck, but no, I know that you don't like them is what you mean. But um, they definitely do suck. That's the whole idea. They're a vacuum. Uh, and I think that's about getting your head around it. There, a lot of men say, oh, that's so weird. I don't want to do that. And then when they use it, go, it doesn't really feel like anything at all. It's just exercise. And I think there are penis pumps out there that are very difficult to use and they're not great. Um, and that's why I really like the Vacurect because it's easy and quick to use. And if your um, penis pump isn't working very well, it's usually because people have got too many pubic hairs. So you've got to trim them back. So, and also my son tells me that when you trim your pubes, it makes the wood look bigger through the trees. So um, there's an added bonus there. Anyway, back to the program. Um, I, I digress. It's usually 1097 mm. but um, we also have like a special on for people who have come to this webinar. It's $100 US off if you purchase it before Sunday or you can pay it in two monthly instalments. And then at any stage along that, you can then also book a consult with me if you want to discuss your individual area. And as I said, you can do it before or you can do it after like during it when you're ready to have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one. the um just going back to the penis pumps corazon's just reminded me that if you go to my youtube channel um, restorative sexual health clinic there is a video all about pe two penis pumps and i talk about them in detail so there's a whole lot there if you want to find out why they suck or if they don't suck please go there so let's have a look at what's inside the program so I'm just going to click on this little video and I hope it works. So you can see this little arrow moving around. This is what it looks like inside the program. So that little terrible picture of me is the video of me talking. And then you get all these, um, this is all the modules. And then when you want to go back to something, we've split it up into small parts. So you can go, what did she say about that tablet? And then you click on that bit. So it's very easy to navigate back to where you were. So every module has a slideshow, me talking pretty much the same as I am now. Um, lots of hopefully entertaining anecdotes along the way. And it explains what to do. And then it's backed up in the workbook with what you actually need to do. So look, I might be biased because um, Corazon and I have created this together, but uh, I think it's pretty good. So what else do we have? Um, so this was just what patients say. Oh, I haven't got to that bit for you. Sorry, wait a minute. Yep, here goes my technical disaster. There we go. So this is just a couple of patients um, of, of restorative sexual health um, just talking about, and this isn't their real name, but they are their real comments. So yeah. This is just what patients have said about this program. 
and feel free you're welcome to google look at google reviews for us um and see what you think because i feel like lots of people do google reviews and find out if the person is telling the truth or if they're nice or not to deal with um so what's the penis project podcast this is a podcast that I do with a colleague of mine called Dr. Jo Milios, and she's a physiotherapist who specialises in penile rehabilitation as well and continence after prostate cancer treatment. Um, it's available on Apple and it's also available on Spotify and pretty much all the platforms for podcasts. We actually have over 40,000 people listening nowadays, uh, which is quite remarkable. And it's just us interviewing specialists, but most importantly, other real life men and their partners about their sexual function and their road to recovery and their penis problems. So this podcast isn't just about prostate cancer. We've got prostate cancer people on there. We have um, adult circumcision. We have erectile dysfunction, Peyronie's disease, incontinence, any sexual health problem or um, men's health problem we talk about we've interviewed nutritionists on there about how to improve your testosterone uh, joe talks a lot about how to improve your continence and your pelvic floor um, so hopefully and most of the guys we interview are very entertaining they usually use a fake name unless they're very brave and want to own what they've talked about and they're very honest and they talk about their experiences with injections and penile rehab and pumps and incontinence. And we've also interviewed some um, female partners on there. So we know, can get the idea of how they feel about all of this. And we've recently interviewed a gynecologist who talks about menopause because most men going through this will be living with a woman going through menopause at the same time. And that can be a hard gig for the lady and the guy. So it's nice for men to just find out what the female partner, if they have one, is going through. And so I'd be a little bit more understanding and just get it. Uh, so what can you do now? You can either um, go straight to the offer. Make sure if you do that, you purchase it before Sunday because there's $100 off before Sunday, 100 US, which I think is about 140 Australian at the moment. Um, Book an online consult with me if you want. Um, you have to pay for the online consult. This We did offer this program before and the consults are included, but we felt as though the entry price was probably a little bit hard. So the actual, um, all of the modules cover about nine to 10, the, what you would get from nine to 10 face-to-face -face consults with me, which is a lot more than that if you have um, come to online consults. So want more information you can find me at this email address um, or you can send any clinic like for clinical queries so if it's a clinical question send it straight to me if you wanted to book an appointment that's face to face then you can do admin at rshealth.com.au or mm. you can also um, book a consult with Corazon who is at support at rshealth.com.au. And as I say, there are special slots that are saved particularly for people who are doing the penile rehabilitation program so that you're not expected to wait until the end of May for your first appointment if that's what you want. So now I'm just going to move the camera over here where I can see your questions and answers and we'll do those. I'll just go back to that page. Oh, sorry, oh, I've just gone to the wrong page. Wait a minute. I'm just going to share this again with you because I've lost you, I think. Wait a sec. Share the screen. Don't, oh, I'm not sure what I've done there. Sorry, I've lost the screen. I'm just going to go back in here and talk to you all. <laughs> sorry. So. Okay, hopefully you can see me. So well, lots of chat and lots of Q&As. So I think um, Corazon has put a lot of stuff in the chat and I'm just going to go straight to the Q&As. So one guy asked me if I had a chance to look at the research by Eddie by Giddy, Giddy and no, I haven't. Clyde, but I am going away. I'm having a week off next week and so... I, it's on my list with a couple of other things I really want to check out. Um, 
And this gentleman also said that four years post-op, he can get 50% erections and he'd like um, Eddie by Giddy to help attain closer to 100%. So honestly don't know the answer to that yet, Clyde, but I'm going to write that down. And when I've watched his video, I'll have a look and I'll tell you. I've got your email address, so I'll get back to you about that. Just writing that down. Is it too late at five years post-op? So if you're five years post-op, it's not too late uh, to get your penis healthy again, to get rid of some of the, um, like to improve your penile size and your length and things like that. Um, but it probably is unrealistic to think that you're going to get back to spontaneous function again, but certainly you can get an erection again. So we can certainly teach you how to get an erection either using a pump or an injection, um, or I would even encourage at that stage, if you're still not getting erections, to think about getting an implant. But you need to do the rehabilitation first because you need to get your penis in really healthy form to have an implant as well. Uh, next question is, severed nerves from the prostate removal leading to erectile dysfunction, do the nerves ever reconnect or restore erections? So they, yes, they often do reconnect and they regenerate, but the time frame for that is two years. So I have seen men in the past that have got their erections back and we've just interviewed someone who's coming on the podcast in a few weeks who got his erections back after three and a half years. But that's not common and I don't want people to have false hope. So if after two years you haven't got your spontaneous erection back, even with a penile rehabilitation program, then you need to accept that you're probably not going to get it and you need to keep your penis healthy for the rest of its life and you need to find a workaround to get your erection, such as injections or using a pump with a ring or getting an implant. Um, but, you know, as, as scary as injections sound, many, many men use them very well. And if you listen to the podcast, you'll find that out. And I think um, there's definitely workarounds and the trick here is to keep your penis healthy and not give up. Another person has said, had spinal surgery and that affected him by giving him ED. That's really common because any surgery that is in the um, pelvis, you know, or in the spine can affect your erectile dysfunction because all the nerves come off there. And um, I do actually see a lot of men who have got erectile dysfunction after spinal surgery. And it's exactly the same. The penile rehabilitation is the same. It's all the same about keeping your penis healthy and getting it to work again. With a spinal injury, you're very unlikely to get them back naturally, but you can keep your penis healthy and you can get it to work again with assistance. Someone in the chat has put in that they had a TERF in February 21 and it resulted in retrograde ejaculation. Even though his erection is quite good, I notice that the profile of my penis is slightly changed and it's slightly arched. Not sure what caused the retrograde and is it permanent? Um, a pelvic physiotherapist advised me to contact you. So the reason you get retrograde ejaculation after um, a TERP, and you can also get it from having a large um, prostate as well, is because the when you have a terp, they drill out parts of your prostate to make it more room for the urethra to go through. And what that does is change the path of the urethra and the sperm goes into the from the seminal vesicles into the urethra and then is supposed to get pushed out by the prostate when it squeezes um, outside. But what can happen is there can be a change of direction and it goes back into your bladder and no, it won't change. Once you get retrograde ejaculation, it pretty much is always there. Um, the sensation of the orgasm should be the same. And if it's not, I would recommend seeing a pelvic floor physio and doing a lot of exercise, pelvic floor. But you do need to understand that retrograde ejaculation is often a, is usually a permanent thing. It's, it's, not, it's not undoable. And I think it's just important for me to be honest about that so that you can come to terms with it. There is actually, if, if actually ejaculating is a big deal for you, um, whoever asked that question, there is some like synthetic ejaculate that you can put down the eye of the penis before you have sex and then that squirts out when you have an orgasm so you get the effect but it's not really sperm. Um, there's a gentleman in there 
Uh, Graham, who would like to know what the three herbs are. The most important one is curcumin. Curcumin is really good and natural anti-inflammatory. So the, um, and you want, um, you don't want inflammation in your penis when you're trying to get things to heal. You want to stop from getting Peyronie's disease. Oh, which is back to, sorry, the gentleman before who said that he had the slightly arched penis. That's the beginning of Peyronie's disease. So that's because you're not getting nocturnal erections and you're not getting enough exercise. So your penis isn't stretching at night time, gets small scarring areas and then they bend. Um, so yeah, the three herbs. The first one is curcumin. And the other one is larginine. And the other one is a very long, complicated name that I can't say. But if you send me an email to melissa at rshealth.com.au, I will happily um, give you those names of those herbs. I have someone else has put in the chat. Right now, I fear the radiotherapy, particularly if I need external beam. Will this cause irreversible damage more than I fear metastatic disease? What is the likelihood of a man my age will lose the function if I have external beam radiotherapy? It's actually really high. Um, so the problem with radiotherapy is it's fantastic at frying cancer, but it also usually ends up causing damage to the tissues around it. So that the way I think of these things is if you have surgery, there's a chance that your, your erectile function will usually go terrible and then there's a very good chance of it getting better over time. With radiation, you don't normally notice a change at the beginning and then it's like a slow burn. So as time goes on, it goes down. Um, Radio-oncologists will often say, oh, that's just normal because of age, but it's definitely sped up anyway with radiotherapy. And if radiotherapy is your only option because you need to get rid of the cancer and you don't want metastatic disease, then have it. We just need to find workarounds and you can reduce the long-term effects of it if you do penile rehab beforehand. So you wait and why you're having the treatment. If you're taking the PDE5 medication daily, you're using a penis pump, you're doing penile massage and you're doing all the things to keep your penis healthy, you can reduce it, but there is no guarantee and they desperately try to miss the nerves. But the nature of radiation is it is a slow burn and things usually get better as they go down. Um, another guy said he's on five milligrams of Tadatafil a day, which is perfect. Uh, another person has asked, do the nerves that surround the prostate and are they removed with the prostate um, as they couldn't be spared actually heal and return? If so, how long does it take? If not, then so be it. So if all the nerves have been removed, no, nope, they don't grow back. What happens is if the nerves are injured or if they're partially removed, they heal. But if you've lost all your nerves, you're never going to get a spontaneous erection again. And also medication like Viagra will not work for you. The options you have to get your erections back are injectable therapies and having an implant. And the sooner post-surgery that you have an implant really if you've had non-nerve sparing surgery the better because your penis is in optimum health and that's another reason why it's really important to do penile rehab even for men who have had non-nerve sparing surgery because you want whatever they can only put an implant in a penis that is healthy and not full of scar tissue and it, it, it needs to be at its maximum length because they can only make it as big as your penis shaft is so it's really important, super important for men who have non-nerve sparing surgery to follow a rehab program to keep the penis tissue healthy so that they have their options open. Graham has asked, do the nerves that surround, oh no, that was twice that one, so I got that. Um, oh, and the third time, so that's okay. I think we've asked all of that. Oh, wait a minute. If they are spared, how long do they take? Um, up to two years to heal. Another person's asked about the herbs, and honestly, I'm so sorry. I've talked about them a bit, but I cannot ever say, pronounce the name of the third one. Um, so if, yeah, if you guys would, actually what I'll do, Corazon's going to send a link to this video to everybody afterwards, and I will provide her with the names of the herbs, and she can put them in the, um, mm -hmm. in the chat. Uh, what about if you already have Peronis? Does the program work? Yes, if you have Peronis, it'll help 
the program helps break down the Peroni scar and um, the PDE5 medication that you take daily definitely helps with Peronis. And the only thing that I would do differently um, is I see a lot of men with Peronis, a lot of the urologists refer their patients to me to put them on a program, this sort of program for three months, and then they only operate if, they, if that doesn't work. And it does often work. Um, and there's these three herbs that I'm talking about. They're part of the Peronis program, uh, program which is an add-on to the penile rehab program. So, yep, we'll definitely put those three herbs. There's a lot of interest in those um, in the email that goes out to everybody. Uh, someone asked, why is the cost in U US dollars instead of Australian? Because, yes, I'm Australian. and um, But it's because I have a lot of patients who are Australian who see me face-to-face -face and the program gets sold in America and US and England and New Zealand and US dollars, if we go from there, it's an easy um, conversion. So that's the reason. And it's also more stable. Um, can I claim any of the course costs with a health fund? No, nope, you can't. Unfortunately, um, health funds don't seem to think that um, sex is very important. They don't cover vaginal rejuvenation for women. They don't cover penile rehabilitation for men. <laughs> so that is unfortunate. If you're in Australia and you see me as a patient, then Medicare does um, cover some of the cost of the consult, but no, not the cost of the program. Um, what do you do when your partner says she's interested in sex, but when it comes to the crunch, she says, I'm watching a movie and we don't end up having sex. Um, I've used the pump for many months, up to 10 minutes a day, but it has still shrunk. Uh, so the answer to that is, have you also used a PDE5 medication? And when you've used it for 10 minutes a day, have you used it in a regime that's up and down? Or have you just pumped it up and held it for 10 minutes? Because if you have, that won't do anything. So it really depends on the regime makes a difference. It's kind of like saying, I've been to the gym every day for a year, but nothing's changed. And when you went to the gym, you just walked on the treadmill at two kilometres an hour instead of lifting weights. It's it's about how you do it, not just having a penis pump. Isn't it, You've got to do it the right way. Um, the woman question about what you do when she says that, she's watching a movie and they don't end up having sex. I think people should plan for sex. So you book holidays and you look forward to them. So if you want to have sex regularly, you need to book that time with your family like with your partner, you need to say, hey, on Saturday afternoon, and let's face it, most people as they get a bit older, night's not good because we're exhausted by the time we get to bed. Um, some people still like mornings, a lot of people don't. So book Saturday afternoon, let's go and have a lay down together and I'll give you a massage and then we'll be intimate. You need to book that time, not make it something that is added on. When you're young, you can add it on at the end of the day. When you get older, it's all about booking things, savouring them and looking forward to them. And just because it's intimacy doesn't mean you shouldn't, you shouldn't book it. And then, then she won't have any excuse that she's in the middle of a movie. Uh, another question. Now, when I have self-relief, so when you masturbate, um, it stays hard for 30 seconds and then goes soft. Um, and the side effect is that you leak fluid for 10 to 12 hours, which is not very good for self-esteem. I now have to be in the shower on the toilet thinking about sex as you dribble a lot. I do, however, manage to get erections at night, but she's not interested. I just don't know what to do. So the leaking thing after you've had an orgasm is actually really common. It's called climacteria. Um, and the recommendation I'd have for that is you need to do lots more pelvic floor exercises. And if you've already done that, then the other option is a penile clamp or a cock ring. So you can use a cock ring or a penile clamp either. You can use the cock ring during your masturbation um, and you can use a penile clamp afterwards. So that'll just stop the dribbling so you don't feel so yucky about it. Um, but the pelvic floor exercises are what will fix it. Another comment, having had a non-nerve sparing radical prostatectomy 24 years ago, is there any chance of getting your erection back? So yes, but you would have to use injections. That would be your only option. There's a very good chance, but you would have to use injectable therapies. Must be used after a urolift procedure. Will the suction not reverse this closing of the urethra? Yeah, you can, but you don't want to use them 
like you don't want to pump it up too hard. You have to be gentle with it. So if you were thinking of using that uh, pump and you've had a urinary procedure, you really need to make a consult because we'd need to discuss that a bit more detail about how you would use the pump. Time of the day, do you take Viagra? So if you're taking Viagra you usually, and you're taking it because you want to have sex, you take it one hour before and it's really important you have an empty stomach uh, because Viagra is affected by food. Cialis isn't. Um, and the other thing, but if you're just taking it for rehabilitation, then you don't take a whole tablet, you only take a quarter and you, it doesn't matter what time of the day you take it. If using the injection all the time, is there a chance of delays in normal erections? No. So using injections doesn't affect your um, long-term erections coming back. All it does, it's like a Band-Aid. If you have a sore, you put the Band-Aid on so that it doesn't get dirty and keeps it nice and clean. And then as time goes on, the, the wound will heal and then you can take it off. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's really, you know, the injections is just uh, let's be able to use your penis, but don't think that that you you need that that it's going to affect it negatively or positively. It's not going to make your erections come back spontaneously, and it's not going to take them away. Do you start with a Viagra pill to see if you have a good chance of erectile dis recovery? No, because when you use a Viagra, um, and maybe when you've got depending on the type of erectile dysfunction, but if it's caused from surgery and ne or nerve damage, Viagra won't work. So it, at the beginning, it will not work. Down the track, it will, because um, you do need some nerve function for Viagra to work. So taking a Viagra and going, oh, nothing's come, happened, means nothing, doesn't mean anything at all. And um, if you do the program, you will learn all about that. And Viagra is an amazing invention, um, but it has its place and, and it certainly won't give you any indication of all whether you're gonna get erectile function back or not. Uh, I've nearly got through the questions. Why is the time of day you take Viagra important? It's not important. <laughs> so yeah, it doesn't matter what time of the day you take it. Um, can stimulating your penis or anal area help rehab? Yes, any stimulation of your penis will improve blood flow and the more blood flow, the better. Can you cover a bit about the pre-radical prostatectomy exercises for penile health and its ramifications post-surgery? What are the must-do things? So the must-do things are you need to lose your belly fat before you have um, prostate surgery. You really need a belly circumference at your belly button less than 96 centimetres or preferably 94 centimetres to get optimal recovery. And the surgeon will be able to do a much better job of saving the nerves if you don't have belly fat. Um, you definitely need to do pelvic floor exercises. And if your erections aren't good before the surgery, then I like to put patients on low dose Cialis leading up to the surgery to give their penis an extra boost. So it's like taking your penis to boot camp before the surgery. Uh, and all of that is covered in the um, prehabilitation section of the program. Uh, I just noticed there's something else in the chat about what is the difference between Spedra, Viagra and Cialis. They're all the same family of drugs, but they're slightly different compounds. Um, so different people react differently to different drugs. So if you've tried Viagra and it doesn't work, don't think there's no point trying the others because I've had patients that Spedra is the only one that works and others that Viagra is the only one that works and others that Cialis is the only one and other people, they all work. So, yeah, it's, um, there, is a, there is a slight difference and it's worth trying. Uh, there's somebody here has said, thank you. I wish I had this program 24 years ago. Thank you so much for coming and I really appreciate you listening, John. Um, if using the injection as good as penis exercise as using the pump? Yes, it is. Um, so you can use the injection instead of the pump, but you do need to do it then at least three days a week. And my big thing about that is you don't want sex to become a chore. So I think using the penis pump is um, separating that from your sexual activity is good because the penis pump is a chore. It's a job to do. 
and using the injection can then be something you do for fun. But if you really hate the idea of a pump, you can use the injections. Or if you're lucky enough to get sex three times a week, then that's enough. So I just wanted to say, oh, how does the implant work? Um, so the, oh, that is another whole long webinar. And so I'm going to ask Forizon to write down that as a subject and I will um, plan a webinar on discussing how implants work because they are amazing and they're definitely worth having. Um, and But in the meantime, if you want to go to the Penis Project um, podcast, there's two on there where I've interviewed different surgeons who put in implants and there's a guy we've interviewed on there called David, the two-time penis implant user. Um, he's had two implants because he wore his first one out, which he's very proud, proud to say after 10 years. So listen to him and um, both and the surgeons and they'll explain all that to you. So I'm going to go. I hope you all learned something. And my regular patients who have come along, I can't thank you enough for taking the time out to hear me ramble on when you hear that all the time. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, and thank you so much for coming. And I hope you all learned something and you have something to take away. Thanks. Bye.